hey, I thought I'd go through just a few highlights from the assignments you had, just some important stuff that I'd probably talk to you about if you were in class. I'm not gonna go through every problem. You've got the solutions there, so you can check your answers. But I do wanna go through a couple, and I'll talk a little bit about maybe like how, you know, the importance of showing your work as you do this. So this is, this is assignment two, and this is problem number one, the very first one you had there. Uh, it is a calculator problem. It doesn't say it up there on mine, but it is a calculator problem. And A says write a polynomial expression for the position function. So just a quick reminder, right? Uh, we have the position function, a lot of times it's x of t, and if you take the derivative, it takes you to the velocity function. If you take the derivative of that, it takes you to the acceleration function. And then if you want to go backwards, you're going to integrate, right? We're going to integrate to go to the acceleration to velocity and integrate to go from velocity to position. So in this case, I've got the velocity function. I want to find the position function. I want to integrate that. Hey, on these problems, do them on a separate sheet of paper. You need to practice showing your work. So have a separate sheet of paper there and write it down. Um, I'm going to put A. Uh, to find that one, I would take the velocity function and integrate it. So I'd put something like this. You know, x of t is equal to the integral of, of v of t. Okay, so x of t is equal to, I end up with uh, uh, three, let's see, three t to the third divided by three, so t to the third minus t squared minus t, and don't forget the plus c. Uh, and then up above, just be careful, it does give us an initial condition, right? Up here it says uh, when t is two, uh, it's equal to five, so if I can plug I know when I, it's got to equal 5 when t is 2, so that'd be 8 minus 4 minus 2 plus c. Uh, so what, uh, 8 minus 4 is 4, and v2, subtract it over, I think you get c, c is equal to 3. So here's my position function. This is the answer to part a. It would be t cubed minus t squared minus t plus 3. b, for what values is the instantaneous velocity uh, the same as the average velocity. There's a couple ways you could do B. You've got to find the average velocity. So you can use the average value formula where you go from zero to three of V of T DT divided by three minus zero. That would give you the average velocity. Or now that we have the position function, we could actually just go find the average uh, rate of change for the position function. So we go uh, X of three, minus x of zero divided by three minus zero. Any one of those would give you the uh, average velocity. And then you wanna find out whatever that answer comes out to be, you wanna set that equal to, when does that equal the actual velocity? Um, so when does that equal V of T? So this will give you an answer. I think it comes out to be 15. And then you'd go 15, plug 15 up in here for the velocity. 15 equals 3t squared minus 2t minus 1. And solve that. Now I'll tell you what time is equal to the, the average. Hey, for C, when you go to find C, it says find the total distance traveled. Okay, so to find that, um, remember with total distance traveled, you have to take into account uh, sometimes it's moving right, sometimes it's moving left. So you cannot do this. This is the wrong answer, but I see it a lot as we go uh, x of 3 minus x of zero. That would give you the total displacement. That means you know, how far away was, you know, from the original point was the particle at time, at time equals three. To find the total distance traveled, if you're doing this without a calculator, you would actually have to do um, the velocity number line and find every time it changes directions and then plug all the, the beginning point and each of those points in to find the total distance traveled. If you have a calculator like this problem, though, all we have to do is this, is take the integral of the absolute value of the velocity function from zero, oops, from zero to three. Okay, and you can plug this one in the calculator, right? You can put in here the, the uh, 3t squared minus 2t minus one, use your calculator, plug it all in there, and you'll get your answer. The reason why that works, if you remember, is now it's going to add up all of the accumulated value, all the all the all of this traveled. 
but the absolute value makes it so if it's going left, it's still going to count as a positive. So now you're just counting how far you're going to count or count uh, whether it's traveling right or left. It's going to count that time as a positive value. It'll give us a total distance of the travels. You'll see an example in a second here where we do it without a calculator. Um, the second question, I'm not going to go through a lot on there. It's really similar. Um, the only thing I want to show you is this, is it gives you the velocity function, and then it asks you to graph it from 0 to 16. And so we're going to, let me get the, the calculator up there. And you guys can all graph that. Make sure you change the calculator to radians when you go to graph it. Oh, maybe my camera's not working now. Let's see here. All right, anyway, we could graph that on there. Um, I'll draw just a really rough sketch. I have my calculator here, so I already have it in there. So just a really rough sketch of what it looks like from 0 to 16. You know, something like this it starts and goes up and then curves back down and then goes up and then curves back down, you know, up and curves back down. So it looks something like that. That last one wasn't very good anyway. It's, it's a periodic function, so it just keeps repeating itself. Uh, B says for what time, it, uh, during what time uh, intervals of time is a particle moving to the left? Uh, so what I do is just do my velocity number line. Here's V of T, here's my number line. Find out when the velocity is equal to zero. That would be here, 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 and here. Just use your calculator to find that. So you, know, you end up with those points. Yep. And now, you know, find those zeros. And now if you look at it, the velocity is positive. I'll line up positive from there to there. It's negative, it's positive from there to there, positive from there to there. And it's negative, because this is the graph of the actual velocity from there to there. So it looks like this. We've got um, positive, 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 and we've got negative, negative, negative. So this is saying, uh, when is it moving to the left? Whenever the velocity is negative. So you'd go from on this interval right here and on that interval right there. I'm not sure if this is past 16. You'd have to check that anyway on those intervals. Uh, C, when is the total distance traveled? So asking for the total distance, we just did this. That is just the integral from 0 to 4 of D. And just make sure for the total distance you do the absolute values. Um, hey, part D, is there any time from 0 to 16 when the particle returns to the origin? So it tells us it's at the origin at time equals 0. So at the very beginning, it's at the origin. So my answer would be no. And the reason why is because this positive value is going to move it to the right. This is going to move it to the left. But if you look at it, there's a lot more positive than there is negative. A lot more positive than there is negative. So even though I'm moving to the right through here, I'm going back to the left, but not very far. I'm moving to the right. I'm not going to go back as far to the left. So you just need to explain that in words. But there's more positive area than negative area, so we would never move back. Uh, let's look at a problem real quick where you don't use a calculator. So here's one right here. So the particle moves along the x-axis to so the time t, its position is given by that. Uh, what is the velocity of the particle at time equals zero? Hey, we've got the position function. So I've got the position function. Let's just switch this. You know, Braden doesn't like red. I'll switch it to black. Uh, x of t equals t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t plus 11. Okay, so I need to find, if I want to find the velocity, I need to find the derivative, right? So x prime of t is equal to v of t. So I get 3t squared minus 12t plus 9 plus 0. Uh, now I'm going to plug in 0, so v of 0, and you get your answer there. Uh, b, what is the interval, um, what is it moving to the left? To do this one, we've got to do a number line. So do your, your uh, velocity number line or your first derivative number line. Find out when it's equal to zero. If I factor a three out of that, I get three times t squared minus four t plus nine. Factor that inside part. Let me just make this full screen. Factor that inside part, that would be, um, oh, this should be a three right there, sorry. Factor a three at all. So that would be t minus one t minus 3, t 
So my answer is t equals one and t equals three. So come over here. That means at one and at three, the velocity is equal to zero. Now I'm just gonna test to see if it's moving right or left between there. Um, notice this, uh, we're gonna start, start, let's plug zero into the velocity function, check it. So I plug zero in, I get a positive nine. Let's plug in like two. Uh, that would be 4, 12 minus 24 is negative 12 plus 9. I end up with a negative. I plug in 4. That would be 16 times 3 is 48. Minus 48 plus 9. I get a positive over here. So the only time it's moving to the left is between 1 and 3. And so my answer on that one, this is showing my work up here, but I would say uh, when, you know, or, you know, there's the interval where it's moving to the left. Okay, C, this is what I was just talking about. So you want to find the total distance traveled from zero to two. So I'm trying to go from zero, from zero to two. If you notice, it's moving to the right sum and to the left sum. So what I have to do is, if you remember this, I always take my position function. I'm going to erase some of this over here. I take my position function, and I always start with where, this, where it starts at. It starts at zero. So I want to find x of zero. And then I have to include every time it changes direction. So after zero, it changes directions at one. So find x of one. And then it ends at two. I'm not going past two, so find x of two. Okay, so plug those in there. If I plug zero in, I get 11. If I plug one in, I get, let's see, one minus six is negative five, plus nine is four, plus 11 is 15. If I plug two in, I get eight, minus 24 is negative 16. Uh, plus 18 is 2, I think it's 13. And now just measure how far away. So from 11 to 15, it traveled 4. From 15 to 13, it traveled 2 units. So all together, it traveled a total distance of, of 6 units. Now, if I could use a calculator, we could take the velocity function and take the absolute value of the velocity and integrate it. You should get that same answer. Well, it's kind of different if you do it with a calculator or you do it with, without a calculator. That kind of shows you the difference between those. Hey, this is really important. Number four, I think on your packet, it may have left off. It may have left off that part of the graph right there that's slanting down. So make sure you're careful with that and fix that if you need to. Hey, uh, this is the velocity graph. That's important. Like I would always circle this on my question. Make sure you know if you're talking about the position, the velocity, or the acceleration. Um, it says, when's the particle at rest? That's when the velocity is equal to zero. Since it's the velocity graph, it's equal to zero right there. I'll find the acceleration. Well, we know the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So I'm looking at the slope of the velocity. Hey, you need to explain your answers too. So for example, A, I would say the answer is five because that's when the velocity equals zero. On B, I would say I'm looking at the slope of the velocity. So at two, the slope is zero. So A of two equals zero. At three, there's a sharp turn there. That means there is no slope, so there is no acceleration, it's undefined there. And at A of five, right over here, the slope is going, what? It's going uh, down, let's see, we're going by five, or yeah, by tens here, so 10, 20, 30, then it's going over two, so it's going down 30 and over two, so it'd be negative 15, and make sure you do your label, that would be feet per second squared. Okay, I'll give you my answer on that one. Uh, See, so find the total distance traveled from zero to seven. So that's the absolute value of the, of the integral of the velocity. So make sure you're just careful that you, you would find all this area through here, plus this is gonna be positive because that's just travel, and this area is traveling to the left, but you're just measuring distance, so you count that as a positive. So you would take this area plus this, the, the opposite of this one. So this one will be negative. You need the positives, so you just add those together. Um, D, at what time is the velocity 10 feet per second? Hey, this one's a little tricky. That means I need to find out, like this is the velocity function. I need to find out when it's 10. That's that point right there. Do not guess. If you don't know what it is, we need to find the equation of this line and actually find that. So let's find the equation of that line. Um, let's see, if I kept going up, 
uh, we said that the slope is uh, 15, negative 15. So if I go up 15 and over, eh, let's actually do this instead. Let's use this formula. This will be quicker and easier, I think. So we need to plug in a point in the slope. The slope is a negative 15. Pick a point. So we could use this point right there. That point is what? 330. So y minus 30 equals negative 15 times x minus 3. And now I want to find out when uh, the velocity is equal to 10. I plug 10 in for y over here and solve for x, and I get my answer. It's going to be it's going to be what uh, four point something. Kind of hard to see there. Hey uh, e, find a piecewise function. That would just be v of t equals. The first part of the function is always 30 when x is between zero and three. And then it's going to be whatever this equation comes out to be over here, if you were to solve for y. That's what's going to go right here. It's equal to that between, uh, what is it, between 3 and 7. Uh, F, if the position of the particle at time 0 is at 4, find the position after 7 seconds. So if you're starting out at 4, right here, it's already equal to 4. We're going to go 4 plus. This area, that's going to move it to the right. So plus whatever that comes out to be. And then I'm going to minus this area because it's moving to, sorry, uh, that area down there, sorry. Did I do that before? Make sure I did that. I did this area. This is the area we're talking about. So minus that area right there. The reason why we add this one is because that area I'm moving to the right. And I subtract that one because that one I moved to the left. Okay, again, this is all in the solutions, but things to think about is think about how you're going to prove or show your answer. Um, that, that's what usually our biggest challenge is we don't know how to show our work and we lose points that way because we're not showing it. Uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time on this one. This one you have to, you're going to have to integrate. It gives you the acceleration function. Uh, right here, it tells you when t equals 1, it gives you the position and it gives you the velocity. So if I integrate that, Right? If I take a of t and I integrate it, that's going to give me the velocity function. Um, if it's helpful, that means I'm doing the integral of 3t to the negative 2. So you just do the power rule. So this would be, uh, what, 3t to negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus c. And then I come up here. I'm going to use this point. When t is 1, the velocity equals 2. I'll use this point to find c. And then you'll have to integrate again. I think when you integrate that next time, you're going to end up with an ln. Because the t to the negative 1 would move down below. You end up with 3, negative 3 over t. That t is on the bottom. It's t to the negative 1. You can't do power rules. So I think it's going to be an ln to find the position. And then on that one, again, you've got to plug in. You're going to have to plug in uh, 1 and 6 in order to find out what c is equal to. Anyway, you can go through, you can go through uh, the solutions, make sure you've got all those finished up. But again, really focus on, hopefully those hints will help you and help you think about the concepts. And bigger than anything, focus on like how are you going to show your solutions? How are you going to show your work?